What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make some custom serving trays. Whatever you want to use it for is totally up to you, but we're going to do one sprinkles theme. <laughs> it is kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> Sorry, let me, let me do it again. <laughs> this one we're going to do a sprinkles themed one, and this one we're actually going to use a silicone mold with stars to make that one. Two different techniques. I don't know how this silicone one's going to work, but that's the fun. That's what we're going to do today is have some fun, see if it works. If it doesn't, how can we fix it to make it work? Woo! It's gonna be so fun. Let's go through the items that you're gonna need. A mixing bucket, some mixing cups, and that's for the resin. A glue gun and some glue sticks. We got some scissors, an X-Acto knife. You need some foam core, a marker. We're using some tuck tape. This stuff works really great when it comes to resin. Resin will not stick to this stuff. Today we're gonna be using a 32 ounce kit of Art Resin, the original resin tints from Art Resin. We're gonna use the metallic white from the metallics kit as well. And the style that I'm gonna go with, because this is a serving tray, I thought it'd be kind of fun to incorporate uh, a food item, a baking item. So we're gonna use some sprinkles. I love using sprinkles in the resin because it gives a nice pop of color and they're super easy to work with. And one star tray. Of course, some gloves, some stir sticks, and a good attitude because we're gonna have some fun. Uh, oh, oh, and sorry, and some trays. <laughs> Totally ruined that ending. Let's get started. So for our first tray, we're gonna go with a silver and black theme, and we're gonna have sprinkles act as the pop of color for this. So shiny. You gotta get the squeak. Yeah, it's, it's official, it's legit. For this first one, I'm gonna put my initials on this tray. You guys can put anything if you want the whole classic live, laugh, love theme. You can do that. But for the sake of today's video, I'm just gonna do my initials, which is DJR. We've got some foam core. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down the foam core, flip the tray upside down, grab your marker, and just to know what sort of spacing and surface that we have to work with, we're gonna make a circle around our tray. One thing to consider is that this tray actually has a lip. Just make sure that we stay within that line. Okay, so this right here is basically our mold. So anything that you guys want to have as a different color of resin, or in our case, sprinkles, you're gonna draw it out here. So for me, I'm gonna go ahead and draw out my initials. This is what I'm thinking for the tray. Everything around this is gonna be black. You're gonna have the silver lip, which will look really nice. You'll have the black resin base of our tray, and we've got my initials DJR, which are gonna be in sprinkles. So it's gonna be in resin still, but it's gonna be separate from the black background. So now that we've got our design drawn out, we're gonna cut this out using an X-Acto knife. Just be careful because foam core, you can slip, you can cut yourself, so just go slow, and uh, you're gonna thank yourself because the detail won't take a hit either. Okay, actually, before we do anything, you're gonna wanna get a cutting mat to protect your surface. We're using this beautiful pink one, this is great. And now you're just gonna cut along the lines of whatever you drew out. So we've done one pass over our letters. It's not gonna come out easy, and in fact, it might come out with other pieces. Don't worry, we're gonna clean that up with scissors right after. Okay, so now we've got our letters here. This piece of the foam core, we're gonna set aside. I have done a first cut. In fact, I've cut through 70% of this foam core. I'm gonna go in with scissors now and just get more detailed pieces. We're gonna individually cut out each piece. Right there, we've got the R. Now, some of these letters are gonna take a little bit more work when they have like the, the centered holes like that, but. Take more time for this stage so the tray will actually look better in the end. Boom, boom, kaboom, perfect. Okay, so we've got our letters. So we're now gonna take our foam core again. We're now just gonna trace around. Because essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make an exact copy. We're gonna make it a little bit thicker. So I know this part looks very tedious, but this is the longest part of the entire process. Just keep that in mind when you guys are picking a design. So if you're doing a logo or you're, you're gonna try to do somebody's face, this will take the longest time, but it's worth it because you're gonna have a piece that'll last years and years and years. You can serve snacks on, all kinds of fun snacks. Nuts, you're gonna love these, <laughs> I feel like the slap chop guy. <laughs> you're gonna love my nuts. Okay, so we've got essentially duplicates. Now one of them is gonna be a little bit bigger than the other, and if that's the case, you wanna put that on the bottom. You want the pretty cutout letters on top because the resin is gonna follow that shape, and we want it to look good. So here we go, DJR, next step. Now that we have our design cut out in foam core, we are going to first glue the two layers together, and then we're gonna use some tuck tape and cover this entire letter in tuck tape. The reason being is resin won't actually stick to this stuff, and we wanna be able to pull these letters out uh, once our first pour cures. Boom. 
Now, I know what you're thinking that, Dan, oh, it's wrinkly on the back. Do not worry. Anything below half of this is gonna be black resin, so you're not gonna see any of the blemishes. As long as there's at least a smooth shape formation, you'll be totally fine. All right, now here's the big moment, the tray. You wanna make sure it's lined up or, or placed wherever you wanna put it. So I'm gonna start with the J, just so I can center it. Does that look centered to you? Yeah, it looks good, okay. Now let's go ahead and glue the D. Lucky for us, the hot glue is actually holding the letters. So essentially what we've done here is we've made a mold. We are now gonna pour black resin around it and inside the little holes of the letters. Let that cure, take these guys out, and then pour our second color. Before we actually get to pouring this, I'm gonna show you guys the second technique using silicone, and we're gonna do the pour at the same time for both of them. So at this point, you wanna place down your silicone shapes. So for us, we're using stars. I'm gonna have them all sort of spiral into the center. So now that we have our stars placed, we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens right now. I actually don't know what's gonna happen here. We're gonna hot glue the silicone stars to the bottom of the tray. If that doesn't work, we'll put weights inside. And that'll for sure work, so yeah. Let's see if this works. <sighs> Welcome back. Okay, if only you guys knew what I've been through. So here's the thing about silicone. Nothing wants to stick to it, and silicone doesn't want to stick to anything. So I've tried a whole bunch of things to try to get our star molds to stick to this tray, including hot gluing it down, nope. Rubber cement, nope. Blue tack, nope. Tape, nope. Nothing's working, so what I'm gonna do is I've placed silicone stars on the tray where I want them, and I've got these little stones from a garden outside. And I'm actually just gonna use them as little weights and put them in the silicone stars to see if maybe there's enough weight that when the resin goes in, it's not actually lifting it up. So we're not out of the woods yet. We're gonna test it out. Hopefully they do not float. So let's go ahead and weigh them down with some stones. It feels sort of like trick-or-treating, like one stone for you. So I know what you're thinking. Whoa, Dan, where did that like rough patch come from? Guys, okay, I get it. This was a mix of hot glue that wouldn't come up, so I used a heat gun. <laughs> it just melted it, and I tried scraping it off, and then it spread the glue everywhere. I'm sure if you guys are crafters, you know this happens. Not a concern, because we're gonna be pouring resin on top. It's gonna cover it all. You only really learn when you fail. Okay, they're in place. Fingers crossed, the resin does not make our silicone stars float. We'll see. Now for the final step of day one, we're gonna do our resin pour. So right here, we're gonna use a 32 ounce kit of art resin, 16 for our one tray and 16 for the other. Eight ounces of hardener, and then eight ounces of resin. And then we're gonna mix both of them into a larger bucket. Good rule of thumb here is you wanna stir relatively slowly for three minutes. You don't wanna put any air in here. Although with trays, it's not a huge deal because we can actually use a heat gun and pop them out. Another thing is you wanna make sure you're scraping the sides and the bottom to get all the resin mixed with the hardener. Now at this stage, we're gonna take some black resin tint. I don't want this to be transparent at all, so we're just gonna use like one, two big squirts. Mix it in, we'll see. Do another three, four, five. And a good way to check, actually, you take your stir stick and lift it up, and if you could see the stick below, that's how you could check the transparency of the die. And then we are ready for our pour. So we're gonna pour about halfway up this tray, um, not covering our letters. You gotta make sure that you're, you could still see it and it's still above the resin surface. So let's do it. So the D and the R both have holes in them. So we're gonna take our stir stick, and we're just gonna help guide resin to fill inside of there. Okay, one of my personal favorite parts about working with resin is actually popping the bubbles and watching them all disappear. One thing I've learned is that when it's super aerated resin, one pass with a torch isn't actually gonna do enough. So I'm gonna leave it for about five minutes, let more of the bubbles come to the top, run it again, and then that should be fine. So far, so good. It looks great. Yeah, all right, on to tray number two. All right, tray number two. It seems like 24 ounces is the magic number for these trays, so we're gonna pour all of this resin in. 
Three minutes starts now. All right, so for this one, I felt like a sort of a pearl or a metallic white in this case is gonna look really good with the gold background. So we're using a lot of resin in this one. So probably gonna need about six, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Because it's a white, it's actually gonna take a little bit more dye to hide the background color. We don't want this to be like a goldy white. We want this to be a white, white. But adding the metallic, it adds some just like nice vibes. So the rule of thumb when you're actually adding tints to resin is you don't wanna do more than 6%. I don't know you're watching going, Dan, you just used an entire bottle. Yeah, but you know what? I'm feeling a little zany today. And nice vibes. It'll still work. It's just the rule of thumb is no more than 6%. <sighs> okay, here we go. Will it float? Don't be too aggressive with it. They're not floating. The rock technique is working. It's not just a flat color. You can almost see where the pour has gone and it's, oh my gosh, this is so nice. It just, it makes it a little bit more regal when you're adding the, the metallic colors. It's holding. The stars are all aligned. Now we're gonna hit it once with the torch, get rid of the bubbles. That's pretty much it for today. It's been a really good day. This one is a little bit more of an experimental thing, but the good news is you guys and myself will be learning from this process. We're gonna cover them and uh, we'll be back in the morning. So. I'll see you guys bright and early to reveal our trays. Bye. Day two. Oh, buddy, this is the big, big, big reveal. Let's check out our first tray. This is the one that we did with my initials. Um, pretty straightforward. Ooh. <laughs> so the pour worked out great. Super shiny, no bubbles. Okay, we gotta get these letters out. How are we gonna do that? No problem, we'll figure it out a way. The other thought is, you know, the tape kind of went rogue on this side, and I'm wondering if that's actually gonna bring up a little bit of the resin with it. That's also not a concern, because we could fix that with, with more resin. <laughs> that's the beauty of this thing. So, super happy with this. Look at that shine. Woo! Nice, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Okay. Oh, buddy, this is the big reveal. You know, this is the one from yesterday that we thought, maybe this isn't gonna work. We went down a road of sort of unfamiliarity, but, that's the way I like to do crafts, arts and crafts. It's a good way to actually learn new techniques. So, oh, here we go. Genuinely, I have not seen what this is. I just figured there's an issue with it because when I got here this morning, it's been covered in this box that has paper so I can't actually see it. And everyone's looking at me just like, oh, there's that guy that did that tray. So I'm like, something's up. You know, I'm just, ah, ah. You know, if I don't look, technically it's not a fail. Oh, it worked out. Oh, <laughs> this actually worked out. I was under the impression this wasn't gonna work, but this turned out great. Yes, yes. See, this is the thing about crafts, okay? When you take risks and it actually works out, you get this feeling of like, mm, it worked and it feels so good. It looks like marble, yes. You guys freaked me out, man. Woo. You know, we took a risk with the silicone, not knowing if it's gonna float by the resin overnight, but the fact that it actually worked, it's amazing, because nothing sticks to silicone. So this is gonna be super easy to remove, and then we're gonna fill in the stars with a different colored resin. Yes, yes. I was so worried the video was gonna go up, and they were just like, ah, who's this guy? It's like, both trays were a huge fail. Yeah. Oh, that is great. I can't wait to finish that one. All right, so the next step today is we're gonna remove our shapes. So we're gonna start with the DJR platter. Keep in mind, this is just foam core. So it should be relatively easy to sort of remove it or dissect it. And it's perfect because we have a dissection kit, which uh, slightly weird, but uh, I'm sure it'll do the job great. It's very fragile, so we can just chisel away. Oh, buddy, there it is. There, look at that. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. That saved us so much time. And look at that. Oh my gosh, this is working out so well. Ah, what a good feeling. So tuck tape actually came through. By looking at this, you're gonna think that the bottom of the J sort of does look a little bit messy right here. If we were doing clear, that'd be a concern, but we're putting sprinkles and resin in here, so. Uh, that's gonna hide it perfectly. Oh, that is so good. 
Come on. Yes! <laughs> oh, I can't explain to you guys how satisfying it is when it just says the resin is just like, okay, take it. Okay, so this is actually gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna pull them out and then I'll see you guys in the next shot. And just like that, we've got all the letters out. Next step is we're gonna take sprinkles and resin, put it in there, and then do one final coat on top. So this guy's done. Moving on to our second tray, which worked out great, is the silicone stars. And just watch this already, okay? Like, so easy. So I guess what we're learning here is if you guys are gonna do this and you're on like a time constraint, go with silicone. Like this is, oh my, that's so nice. It's like so satisfying. Um, from 40 minutes to like under a minute, silicone is probably a good way to go um, if you're not going super, super custom. So the idea here is we're gonna fill every star with gold dyed resin and the center star we're gonna make red. Yeah, let's get to mixing some resin. We're in the home stretch. What I usually do is when I start using sprinkles, this is sort of like glitter. It gets everywhere and the second it gets into resin, it's, it's just such a mess. So I'm actually gonna do the gold tray first. We've got our resin. So by sitting in a warm water bath, it'll actually warm up the resin and reduce the bubbles when we actually mix and pour. I wanna make every star on this with a gold infill and the one in the center I wanna make red, have a nice pop of color. So we've got our resin tins here, probably three ounce total. So one and a half ounces of resin, one and a half ounces of hardener. And stir for three minutes. Because we're doing two different colors, we don't need too, too much for the red. We don't need too much dye here. Just enough so it's not transparent. Ooh, that's the color right there. Woo! Okay, so now we're gonna take this little squirt bottle, and this is just to help with the control of the pour. Perfect, we are now ready to do our gold tray pour. And we're just gonna slowly fill these stars. And now it's time for our center star, which is gonna be red. Now the stars right now are at a little bit of different levels with the pouring. That's totally fine because we're gonna do actually one more top layer to finish it all off once this is hardened a bit more. That, for the most part, is a completed tray. Now it's time for the sprinkles. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use six ounces total of resin. So we're gonna do three ounces of resin and then we're gonna use three ounces of hardener, which will bring it to a total of six ounces. That's math. Mix that for three minutes. Great, resin's been mixed. Now let's introduce the sprinkles. Resin meet sprinkles. There's a better way to do this. You're gonna need a little bit more sprinkles than you think you need. Now we're gonna pour it into our letters. Any sort of like mishaps around there will disappear once you do a top coat. Okay, now we're gonna hit it with the torch. That's looking good. So this one's for sure gonna need a top coat. All right, this one looks good. So we finished the sprinkles pour. We're gonna put on one more coat tomorrow and then we have some custom serving trays. See you guys tomorrow. Day three. Oh, it looks so good. And like that top coat, guys, like, the beautiful thing about resin is you can fix it in so many different ways, but a nice final top coat on these guys made it so nice. Check these out, they look so good. So you guys have it. That is how you make some custom serving trays using art resin. Give it a shot, try different things, try different techniques. You never know what's gonna work and when it does work, it feels so good on the inside. Nice vibes. Thanks for watching this DIY. Later.